Good evening, everyone, and welcome to yet another super cool, super awesome, and absolutely amazing class on breathing and exchange of gases. Today, we'll be discussing about the steps involved in the breathing and respiration process. That is about the inhalation and exhalation process we'll be discussing in today's lecture class, okay? Okay, now we are going to discuss about the steps involved in respiration. The steps involved in respiration. First, you have what the primary ventilation or primary ventilation is otherwise known as breathing. So this primary ventilation consists of inhalation and exhalation. Okay, next gas exchange between alveoli and lungs. So first is the pulmonary ventilation or the breathing process. After that, you have the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the alveoli and the blood. Then gas transport, that is oxygen transport and carbon dioxide transport. Then the gas exchange between blood and tissues. Then at last it is cellular or tissue respiration. Breaking down of a foot with the help of oxygen is called cellular or tissue respiration. Right, so you have the pulmonary ventilation of breathing first that is followed by inhalation and then by exhalation. Then this oxygen rich blood that is carbon dioxide is given out and oxygen is involved or uh, what taken in. Okay, so this oxygen rich blood is gone into the alveoli, it enters the alveoli and is exchanged with the blood. Okay, and is exchanged with the blood. This blood transport oxygen and carbon dioxide, both oxygen and carbon dioxide, mostly oxygen. And you have the uh, oxygenated blood transport oxygen, deoxygenated carry the, uh, carbon dioxide. This blood transfers the uh, what transports this oxygen to the tissues and uh, what gives the oxygenate oxygen to the tissues and collect the carbon dioxide from them. Then they are utilized for the tissue respiration or cellular respiration next is the mechanism of breathing mechanism of breathing breathing already we have told breathing consists of two parts that is inspiration and expiration i think the color is not visible breathing consists of inspiration and expiration what is inspiration active intake of air from the atmosphere inside the lungs from the atmosphere inside the lungs, inspiration or inhalation. Then you have expiration or passive expelling of air, exhalation. That is the air from the lungs is given out, expiration, giving out of carbon dioxide. It's known as exhalation and the intake of oxygen is known as inspiration or inhalation. Okay, simple. Then, very, very important slide. Very, very important. At least 20 times need question. Okay, very important about this. That is what are the steps involved in inspiration? Okay, from the beginning, we have for inhalation, the main part is the diaphragm contracts. That is the diaphragm moves down. You will be asked, Two factors affect the inspiration and expiration. That is the intercostal muscles and the diaphragm. The diaphragm and the intercostal muscles changes their position and which leads to inhalation and expiration. Okay. So what is the change with the diaphragm during inhalation? Diaphragm contracts. Diaphragm contracts. You will be asked, during inhalation, what happens to the diaphragm? Contracts or it gets flattened. The diaphragm gets Flatten the diaphragm gets flattened during inhalation. You just inhale the air, then you can have during inhalation the diaphragm gets well, uh, what flattened. And what happens to the external intercostal muscles? The intercostal muscles also contract. So the diaphragm and internal external intercostal muscles both contract. The diaphragm gets flattened. Okay, the diaphragm gets flattened. Vertical volume. So when diaphragm flatten, the vertical volume increases. So the diaphragm is like this. When this diaphragm gets 
So the lungs occupy the portion over here, right? The lungs occupy the portion. So when this gets flattened, look how it gets flattened. Flattened means you have extra space, okay? So the internal volume increases, the vertical volume increases. And when the external intercostal muscles contract, the ribs and the sternum lifts up. Rib cage expands as the rib muscles contract. When during the process of inhalation, when the external intercostal muscles contract, the ribs and the sternum lifts up. And what happens? The overall volume in the dorso when relaxes increases. The volume of the sternal region increases. As a result, the thoracic together, the thoracic volume increases. Therefore, the thoracic pressure decreases, right? When pressure increases, volume decreases. When volume increases, pressure decrease as the pressure decreases the lungs expand as the pressure decreases the lungs expand and pulmonary volume increases as the pressure decreases oxygen pressure decreases so oxygen is taken from outside to inside as a result the air moves from outside to the lungs because of intrapulmonary pressure decreases very important the intrapulmonary pressure decreases is it clear everyone so the diaphragm contracts or it gets flattened. The external intercostal muscles also get contracts. So the volume, overall volume of the thoracic cavity increases. So pressure decreases. Since the pressure decreases, the pressure outside is more. As a result, pressure or gases will diffuses from outside to inside. And that process is known as inhalation. Next, you have exhalation. During exhalation, that is air is given out. Exhalation means the diaphragm is relaxed and it moves up. So during inhalation, it was like this. That is the overall volume was increased. And during exhalation, it will maximum diaphragm become domed shaped. The intercostal muscles and the diaphragm relax. The diaphragm becomes domed shaped. During expiration, the diaphragm becomes domed shaped. As a result, this much volume is lost. Now you have the lungs over here. Okay. So this much volume is decreased. So the muscles and the internal uh, intercostal muscles and the diaphragm relax. So thoracic volume regains its original position. That is thoracic volume decreases. So pulmonary volume also decreases. As a result, what happens? The air moves out. During forceful expiration, abdominal muscles and internal intercostal muscles also contract. We are... Okay. Forceful expiration, the abdominal muscles and the internal intercostal muscles contract. That is the main point during expiration. So what you have to study during the main points are during inspiration, diaphragm becomes flattened and during expiration, the diaphragm becomes domb shape. That's all. Okay, this is all about the mechanism of breathing. Mechanism of breathing, exhaling and inhaling. Both mechanisms are shown. Okay, this is a diaphragm. How the lungs is protected. This is a diaphragm and how the lungs is protected. Everything is shown. So from the respiratory volume and capacity, we'll discuss in the next class. Okay. So today's super cool class is over. And anyway, thank you all for your patient listening. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe our wonderful channel. Okay, from the next class, we'll discuss about what the respiratory capacity and respiratory volume, 100% guaranteed MCQs for need comes from that particular topics. Is it clear? Okay.